Hello friends! It has been a while since I posted a video update on the Mark 8 computer. I've already completed it, I just couldn't find the time to finish the video of the front panel. But it's finally here! Since the last video of the Mark 8 where we assembled the case, I spent some time away uh, recording content of something very interesting, which will be coming up soon. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Alright, let's get started on the front panel. As you saw in the previous video of this series, the case I was building had a front panel. The blank panel is just plain aluminum with holes cut out for the lights and switches. I'll have a few of these blank panels available for sale at www.calincheck.com for anyone interested. I used satin aqua color spray paint to paint the front of the panel and ended up with the color that you saw in the previous video. I then inserted switches into the switch holes. The marquee requires 10 SPDT switches and 6 momentary SPDT switches. I'll include the part numbers of the switches that I used in my case. I also installed a red plexiglass panel behind the opening for the lights and uh, mounted them using number 6 screws. I'll include a link to the plexiglass that I used. We'll be referencing the switch register schematics when wiring up the front panel. We'll start with the top switches. If we look at the schematics, we will notice that one side of the switch connects to ground, while the other side connects to positive 5 volts. We'll connect each side of the top switches with a 12 gauge piece of wire, uh, leaving a short protrusion on one side for wire connections. The bottom switches, which by the way are positioned at the top uh, in the video, need to have the center pin connected to ground. We can do that by soldering another piece of wire that connects them all together and then connects to the top pin of the top switches, which will be ground. We'll then solder a red and black wire to the two protrusions to later connect to positive 5 volts and ground. Be sure the black wire is soldered to the top pin of the top switches. I use blue wires to wire up the top data switches. These wires are approximately 2 feet long. At this point, we don't need to keep track of which wire goes where, as we'll check for that later, but it might help to label them now to make it easier to identify later. For the bottom switches, we'll use yellow wires. I believe the blue and yellow wires are all 20 gauge. Solder a wire to all the bottom switch pins, except for the two left ones, looking from the front, which are the load address high and load address low switches. For those, we'll just solder the top pins and leave the bottom pins open, as they are unused.
Alright, we're ready to install the front panel into the case. Run the wires into the case and mount the front panel with 8 screws. The first thing we want to do is organize the wires so that they're easier to work with. Zip tie the data switch wires together and run them to the data switch inputs, leaving some slack. Then trim the ends so they're all the same length. Insert shrink tubing into each one and then strip them and crimp a crimp pin on each one. I used a small torch to shrink the tubing tight around the wires. We want to connect the wires to the inputs, but we'll first need to find which one goes where. Use a continuity meter to find the wire for each switch, and then insert it into its respective position. An important note. Connect one side of the meter to the ground wire, and uh, turn off all switches except for the one being tested, otherwise they will all show continuity. If we look at the Mark 8 top connection sheet, we can see that data input 0 is on the left side. So be sure to connect the first switch, starting from the right, to data input 0. In essence, the switches are backwards from the inputs on the PCB. Connect all the remaining data switches to their inputs. Let's move on to the bottom switches. We'll zip tie the first part of the wires to organize them a bit. We can then test and label them to know where each one connects. This part is a bit tedious, so take your time and ensure you get it right. This is where labeling early on helps. Reference the switch register schematic and the top connection sheet when labeling each wire. Check for continuity the same way as we did with the data switches, ensuring that one and only one switch shows continuity. With all wires labeled, split them up into three sections, each section containing wires going to the same input connector. The jam wire will be part of the first section. Then, strip the wires, insert shrink tubing and crimp pins as before. While referencing the two connection sheets, hook up each wire to the correct inputs on the PCBs. Do this for all remaining connections. We'll also wire up the ground on positive 5 volts to the power supply, making sure to stay away from the fan. My computer already has the center bus wires, which I was using while testing. I will replace it with better wires that I made in a similar fashion as the other wires. The two wires are connected together with a single crimp pin. Finally, we can use adhesive zip tie holders to keep all wires organized and in place. All the wires are now finished. We'll add labels to the front panel in a later video, but let's go ahead and try testing the computer. I powered on the Mark A computer and programmed it with a simple blinking lights program, which I'll include in the description. 
it appears to be operating very well. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and enjoy the rest of the light show.